All right, in order for you to understand the theory of mud fossils and that everything is literally alive, I have to tear down science and, and Einstein and um, Hawking and all these guys. Because, and they're all wrong. They're totally 100% wrong. Einstein was wrong. Hawking's is wrong. Not a word is correct. And I'm going to show you the evidence that I have. And, you know, I don't mean to put anybody down, but it's just a fact. All right, normally it's mud fossils. But today we're going to go a little, take a little different tack. And we're going to go to the theory of literally everything. Now, let's start with light. You got the sun, and we know it's shooting something out, and it's hitting the earth, creating electricity on solar panels and heat and light and all that business. So, it's, it's obviously got energy because it creates energy when it hits here. It's light and heat and solar panel. It's obviously energy. It's, it's obviously some form of, of a particle because it pushes solar sails and all that business out into space. So we know it's leaving the sun. We know it's hitting the earth. And we know we can't see it in the middle. We know it's energy in a particle here. We know it's energy in a particle here. So it has to be energy in a particle here. It is dark energy and dark matter. That's the, what they've been looking for, and it is right in here. Now, what is it that's coming to us that is this dark energy and this dark matter? Well, it's an electron. And how does that happen? Well, the energy of the sun is heat energy, and it, it is a vibrational energy. The molecules of the sun literally rattle so intently that they spit out electrons. The electrons leave at what you would call the, the excel, um, escape velocity. They, they are vibrating like crazy. All of a sudden, it takes off. They, they just start spitting out of here. Now, an electron by itself has no interactions until it hits a body that has electrons in its it has a nucleus with electrons in the orbitals, and then it literally bounces off the electron cloud, creating vibration in the electron cloud, which is heat. And it, it bounces off, it, which is light. And that's what we see. Now, what it comes from the sun, they're spinning, and they're particles, and they're electrons. When you look at this, that is a wave. It's a wave which Einstein said they were waves or they were particles. Well, no, they're wave. it's a wave and a particle at the same time because the spin dictates the wave and the, the, the uh, particle is an electron. So, and the, the escape mechanism is when these, the, the, they're literally in, in almost like there's, there's, there's bonds on them. They can only stay, these electrons can only stay at certain distances from the nucleus, all right? And that seems to be true. I mean, I'm a 100% quantum guy because it works out every time. Now, when you vibrate this so intently, it, it, it pushes one of those electrons and, and forces it to go away, just like that bridge that shook so violently and then all of a sudden it collapsed in the wind. It's the frequency of vibration. Tesla talks about this. He said that if you can understand vibration, you understand the universe. And I understand vibration. It's easy. It's simple. And he's right. It's 100% correct. The more you vibrate this, the more it emits energy. Anyway. So the sun is doing this, it's dark energy, it hits the earth, it lights it up, it hits the moon, and they revibrate down to here. We're not black bodied. That is 1.00055 atomic mass units per electron, which is like almost nothing, but it is enough that enough of them hit here that the earth is growing quite rapidly. That's a, that's a, it's a particle. It's not going away. It doesn't just go away. It hits here and it doesn't do, do anything. It hits here and stays here. So we are growing quite rapidly. By the way, I do light experiments with Rodney Warren in Australia, and this is uh, one of Rodney's um, pictures of light being accelerated. Now that normally would be a nice round, and it, this shows the whole story of this in this video. It's seven minutes long. I'm just going to show you this. And it hits this Venturi, uh, which is an accelerator, and it accelerates the light into that high frequency, what we think is Cherienko radiation. But anyway, you can watch this video. It's, uh, it's this one right here. Light is dark energy until it hits matter and bounces. Um, 
anyway, uh, that's what it is. I mean, it, 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 and I, you know, the vortex theory. I have a vortex theory um, about this, and I think it's on this video too. But this, I have all the evidence about it. And light has to be dark energy and dark matter, as it has to be. All right, 1919. Einstein, Einstein said that he could prove gravity was correct by uh, you know this web of space sort of thing. Now. He proved that he said by seeing an eclipse on the sun and then seeing a dot on that sun that was the, the light from a star that was literally behind the sun so he shouldn't be able to see this. Now, so his thing was that the light was forced around to the front of that sun by gravity and I'm saying that's not right. It was forced around to the front of the sun by thermal density lensing. And le the lensing in, in, in thermal density is, is, is the, the heat of the sun into the cold of space. You create a layer of, of different density, and that will affect the light. Now, in addition to that, they found out that radio frequencies are an extreme factor of bend. So you can go this way and down, you can go this way and up. There's an electron radio frequency is what the sun puts out. So you know that's just what it is. I think it was just totally misunderstood and possibly misrepresented. I have no clue, but I never heard him taking into account anything about this thermal lensing, and it's pretty obvious. I mean that was something that was understood at that time. This is not something that's new. But the radio frequency information, I believe, is new. And the the, the effect that I'm talking about is specifically that it much higher freq uh, higher bending of the light than they had expected. Um, and it says right here, a, a new experiment has a, achieved extraordinarily large negative refractive indices for radio frequency light. That's why I'm saying radio frequency. And the, the radio frequency is it, it is by the sun. Radio frequency, radio, so that is what bend the light seriously into the in front of the sun. Now Maybe Einstein said, well, I couldn't account for it's too much of a bend. Well, obviously the bend is extreme. So my point is, I don't think, the, I never thought this um, fabric of space-time thing was right. So, and I, I'm, I have other stuff to show. E equals mc squared is, is not right. So let's go into that next. All right, I have a problem with E equals mc squared, and I also had a problem with gravity, which I believe I've already explained in an earlier portion. Now, E equals mc squared is not correct, because energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, which the speed of light squared is really irrelevant. It could be times 1, because it's always the same in Einstein's world, is that 186,000 per second. Now, so the c squared never meant anything. Energy equals mass, 100% agreed with that. However, Einstein said that light has no mass. So if it had no mass, it would have no energy. That can't be right. The sun radiates something, what it is, I'll tell you in a minute, and we know that it pushes sails, it heats things when it hits us, and it's, it lights things up, it's so, it makes electricity go into solar panels, it grows plants, even light that we produce here pushes onto plants, it makes them grow. Um, it leaves the sun, we know that for a fact. It arrives at Earth, we know that for a fact. Or it hits a space station and lights that up out in space. So light is not seen in the vacuum of space. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you that in a minute, too. The reason is no nucleus with electron clouds to bounce off of. So if light hits that, it can't bounce, there's nothing to bounce off of. There's no, there's no complete nucleuses with electrons in space to hit whatever's hitting that. Now, Einstein says it's some kind of radiation, some kind of particle, some kind of uh, wave. Well, I'm going to explain that in a second. And it is a par particle and it is a wave, but it is not duality, it's singularity. And I will show you that in a second. So, I'm saying E equals mc squared, not correct. Sun radiates something, yes, and what it is is electrons, and I'm going to explain that in a minute, and they spin with a frequency, and a frequency determines the mass, and a frequency also determines the wavelength. 
And it's just as simple as that. It's a wavelength and it's a particle. Now, I'll show you that in a second. And let's go over what light really is. Alright, what I want you to do is go to Mud Fossil University on YouTube. Now, if you want to just see if things in space are literally alive, which they are, look at this video. It's on Mud Fossil University. It's called Comet 67P Confirmed Organic by NASA, which it is. 100% organic. And it is a tendon, and it's a piece of meat floating in space. Now, let Stephen Hawking explain his theory of um, whatever he has theories of black this and dark that. It's all fantasy because the, the, what we really have here is life. The universe is made of life. Now you'll find everything up here. The, 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 the timeline of history back 450,000 years, it's, it's carved in stone. Um, I think I have found um, the, the, the original gods that they talk about. Um, in the ancient texts, and the ancient texts I'm finding are pretty pretty accurate. And um, what's in space has to be looked at. Comets and so forth. Giants are on the earth. They've been DNA tested. All of this stuff is real. And it's, 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 you have to go here and look and make a decision for yourself. But if you're going by what you are read in school and you think you're uh, educated, you are way, way, way wrong. If you had no education whatsoever, you would be more educated than you are educated if you are fully educated. Because now you have to become re-educated. If, if everything in space was alive, and if meteors are alive that are hitting, you know, we're alive, they're dead out there now, I'm not disagreeing with that, but everything was literally alive, is alive now or is in the process of at some point in the future be, being able to be alive. That is the nature. There is no Big Bang. It's silly. It, and creation is a fact. Evolution are tweaks. They're little tiny tweaks. 